And good evening, everybody. Welcome to a uh, special Champions League presentation for the Star Wars PC. I am Dan Tartaglione, also known as DTartag1. Today we have our final match of the top eight. It is going to be the number one seed, Chris Kelly, versus the number eight seed. And if you guys have seen this before, you're not alone. Uh, Chris and Justin, they were in the same pod together, and they ended up playing twice before. Chris won both of them, so... Now we have, it's very interesting because they're facing off in a winner-take-all one-game match at this point where Chris, again, is the number one seed, so he's going to be picking the sides, and the winner will advance to win, uh, to oh, sorry, to play against uh, uh, two-time world champion and uh, Hall of Famer Joe Olsen in the round of four. So, again, this is the third match between Justin and Chris. Again, Chris won both of them to win out on his pod. He was the only undefeated going into the playoffs, so Chris was the number one seed, and he has he gets the honor of picking the sides. So, uh, just checking up really quick on what else is going in the Champions League. Uh, again, this is our final match of the top eight. Uh, so far, Matt Harrison Trainer. Has uh, taken he he advanced he won over Brian Fred. Uh, Eric Hunter versus Connor Britton was a really uh, exciting match, where Eric played uh, No Idea, which is uh, Connor's uh, bread and butter, while Connor played Age of the Black Sun and uh, used it to advance out of the out of that one. So he's the own. And then in our final match, Joe Olson defeated Chris Wirfs in a battle of. Who's, who's out of the Endor region. So, so again, uh, Matt Harrison Trainer will face Connor Britton in the next round, and then Joe Olson will face the winner of, between Chris Kelly and uh, Justin Miyashiro. Uh, they will be starting up here in the next couple of minutes. Again, this is uh, the third match between them, so it's, de it's definitely going to be exciting to see who pulls this one out and, and uh, uses it to advance. Uh, right now, we don't know any of the times and dates scheduled for our next round. So once we do have those, we'll let you guys know. And uh, like I said, just again, checking up on our... Uh, let me pull it up really quick. So I can find it. Oh. Checking up on the uh, Champions League. And again, Joe Olson waits the winner of this one, and then Matt Harrison Trainer versus Connor Britton. <clears throat> Sorry, I did not update this one. So once we get those games scheduled, we'll, uh, the stream team will be in touch with me. We'll get in touch with our Twitter uh, individual, James Martin, and uh, he'll make sure that everybody can get those games tweeted out. Uh, the Batmouse seventh, seventh annual Gem PC. Uh, signups ended yesterday, but I think Batmouse is willing to take some extra signups. We're currently up to 97 individuals. Uh, he did have a lot, of some a few people chime in yesterday and decided they wanted to sign up, including uh, Mike Kessling, uh, Brad Reinhold, and uh, Justin Branch. So that one's def it's a stack. It looks like it's a stack field. So if you want to get in on some uh, Gem PC action, please sign up for it. Uh, the San Diego Grand Prix, again, is January 20th through the 22nd, and uh, I believe pre-registration ends very quickly on this one. So, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you want to sign up for it, you got to sign up really soon. There's only 19 players going, uh, including some top name players, including Chris Wirfs, Mike Kessling, Sam Tashima, Joe Olson, Drew Lichtenstein, Brian Sarson. Connor Britton, Greg Shaw, Matt Watt, Casey, and uh, Phil Asen. So, but let's see. Uh, players still are not up, and uh, the match is not set yet. But let's see. It is 6 o'clock, so we're just waiting on these guys. But let's see what is going on with them. Oh, Bill is telling me that they're playing. So it's No Idea versus Thrawn. Uh... Thanks, Bill. I didn't see it. I'm blind. So, no idea versus blind. Justin is on no idea. Uh, where, and then, 
We have Chris Kelly on Thrawn. He play, we saw Chris play this deck against Justin in their last match. Justin was playing Hidden Base. Uh, and I think Chris managed to win in that one by, uh, I want to say, four or five. It was definitely a low differential match. So, But now they're playing something different. And uh, here we go, our last match of the top eight. Oh, let me pull this aside really quick. Both players have their grabbers out. Justin also gets out the Goldenrod Shield. Chris deploying some locations. There's the Blockade Flagship Bridge as well as the Lothal Capital City. He reveals Thrawn, so he ended up getting Thrawn with the Endor Shield. There's the Chimera with Thrawn going down to Scarif. So Chris putting a little bit of pressure onto Justin, turn one. And it is a two to one location in Justin's favor. Uh, I believe the Dark Side player gets a minus one to their drain there. If uh, unless a Star Destroyer or Imperial is on Scarif, and from the looks of it, that Chimera up there is a Star Destroyer. And as we were recapping some of the stuff that's going on in the Star Wars world, don't forget to sign uh, once the signups are up to sign up for the 2020 OCS Championships uh, starting out in February. Justin Asai may or may not be back to defend his title next year. We'll see. And then let's see. Chris again was the winner out of Pod F. And in this matchup against Justin, Chris ended up winning by four. So a little bit of a different matchup, but at the same time, definitely uh, seeing Chris on this Thrawn objective. I'm happy with it. I mean, Thrawn received a little bit of a boost with the set 20 tweaks set. So, but yeah, Chris is definitely going a little fast here with the Chimera to Scarif. Uh, his teammate, Crazy Carl, in the chat, your rookie of the year, says he approves of it. So let's see if Chris received any help from Carl before their match. Justin is using Insurrection to go get a docking bay. Uh, normally we see like the home one docking bay as well as the Hoth docking bay. Uh, no, and there's the pro funny docking bay. So another docking bay for Justin. Hoth docking bay from hand for Justin. So Justin coming down with a few locations for himself. Let's see if he's going to do anything about the Chimera up there at Scarif or he's just going to leave it alone. Now, Chris is showing that he, he's going to be able to draw two Battle Destinies up there at Scarif. However, again, if Justin comes down and does something, he might not. Okay, the Ten of Four is going to go down to Lothal. So that adds some location uh, icons there. There's Bell Organa going on to the Ten of, allowing Justin to get a Battle Destiny up there. Jaron Webb going down as a pilot. Now, I still don't believe he has the ability to draw for a second Battle Destiny, but no, he does have the ability to draw for a second Battle Destiny. Justin will play a battle plan, so that's going to make it so that Chris wants, is going to have to pay three to initiate a four string up a Scarif. 3-4 uh, said I think he's well, and uh, he'll be happy for paying for it. Because, again, he'll be doing a four string of two, plus Justin will have to stack a card onto the Thrawn Art Collection card. Justin will draw some cards. He draws one card, bringing his hand up to six cards. Chris has a hand of eight. And let's see if Chris is going to drain. I do believe he should drain here. Put on some pressure onto Justin, as well as get a card stacked on the art collection. That way, once he has two cards up there, he can he can flip the objective and utilize the game text of the seventh side of the Thrawn objective. Okay, we do see a drain. So Justin's going to have to lose one force to the art collection first. I think it's better to lose from your hand here. That way you know what you lose. He loses Lieutenant Blount from his hand. 
And he will lose two to the drain. He loses a Hojix and an out-of-commission combo. Uh, Justin is a team member of uh, Team Killer Bees. Uh, he said that he wanted to put an out-of-commission combo, out-of-commission and transmission terminated into the deck just in case that if Chris was playing Hunt Down V. But Chris decided against that and went with his Thrawn objective. Thrawn objective, also known as a great tactician, creates plans. But Thrawn is a little bit easier to say than the entirety of the name. So, and I think most people realize that what you're, what you're saying with the Thrawn objective. There was no battleground system or Lothal sites in Chris's deck, so Justin got a free verify. Uh, Justin normally likes to show, uh, tell what the destinies are in your opponent's decks when he gets a verify, but being that there's 26 cards in Chris's decks, I really don't think you're going to see Justin doing that just yet. Admiral Piet going on to the Chimera as well. That will allow Chris to pull a commander or Admiral's order. He does do that, and he's going to pull. We're in attack position now. So with that one, once it's on the field, uh, the Chimera now is immune to attrition less than seven. And General Leia will not cancel it. So that Admiral's order is sitting up there pretty nicely. The real question is, what is the seven side of the Thrawn objective, Carl? Chris moves out of his deploy phase, goes into his battle phase. No battle's going to happen here. Uh, we may see him go move over to Lothal, but I doubt it. Okay, he is going to move over to Lothal. That's going to block any drains that Justin does. Uh, Bill in the chat <laughs> says the uh, seven side of the object, the Thrawn objective is everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, Carl saying, "Look at art, make you smart." Uh, I like those a little. I like those better. But uh, if you're wondering what the seven side of the objective is. The result is often resentment. Uh, I know there's a game that we like to play in the Star Wars community. Uh, cheers to the Governor. Uh, it is a, drink, a game that involves a, a little bit of adult beverages after uh, like a Saturday or Sunday night at Majors. Uh, one of the famous ones that we played was naming the zero side and the seven sides of objectives. And you can only say one of each. So if I said... Uh, fearless and inventive no one else could say that name as the seven side but definitely a fun uh, little game little side game that happens after majors okay we are in Justin Cern he does not drain he does get the home one docking bay Leia's resistance transport hops down over to Scarif that's going to allow him to pull a resistance uh, female character aboard probably going to be Ray. yep Ray hops on Pulls him a card for free out of his used pile. Only had three cards in his used pile. There's the I don't like sand card. Uh, I don't like a fight here just because right now Justin is... Uh, both players are getting two destiny, but the Chimera is immune to attrition less than seven. Justin not having any immunity up there means that he would be the one to lose something while Chris most likely doesn't. Uh, Baze Malbus with Cannon and Menace Fades gets stacked. There's a Luke Skywalker V that's going to allow Justin to start retrieving some force. Draws a card with Ray off the bottom of his force pile. I do think that Justin's going to run away here. Uh, making Chris move over is a good, uh, from Lothal to, or from Scarif to Lothal, was a really good move. Oh, you're right. It does have um, immune to attrition less than four. Thank you. That's the second time you've corrected me, Bill. Thank you. Okay, so the Tantive does move over. I think if you're Justin, you're really going to want to work around getting some uh, damage in. 
you need to uh, you don't necessarily need to set up for menace fades just because you uh, Chris really doesn't have a lot of four strain bonuses here what he does have is a lot of direct damage between with the Admiral's order once he gets a commander or general to Walthal he'll get some damage in through that but besides that, he whenever he does drain with Thrawn, he will cause another point of damage with the uh, Thrawn's art collection. Okay, so let's see what Chris is going to want to do here. He's going to have 15 force to work with after he activates. Uh, do expect him to drain simply because once he does, he is going to cause essentially two more uh, points of force loss for Justin. Justin using Might of the Republic in Chris's activation phase, so he gets Leia Organa V. The Might of the Republic goes to the used pile. I think that's going to be the card that once Chris drains here is going to be stacked onto the art collection. Yep, there it goes, stacked on the art collection. Just has to lose one more here. Loses Captain Hera Sandula off the top of his reserve deck. Now, he should be able to get that back as long as Chris doesn't play... Come here, you big coward. Chris does flip through the objective. He's going to go try and pull a TIE Defender Project, Price, or Thrawn, using the Advanced Project Laboratory. Those who are wondering, the TIE Defender Project is not a card currently in the game, so it is a card that I do expect to see here relatively soon. Once that card is released, it will sure up that broken link. Governor Price going down to the Advanced Projects Laboratory. Blizzard 4 coming down as well, going down to the Lothal Capital City. Let's see, Chris is going to go to try and deploy a warrior aboard the walker. There's Admiral Mahdi coming down. Uh, Admiral Mahdi V, pretty good leader. So... Expecting Chris to move Price over. Might just want to leave Mahdi down on the ground here. Uh, there's Captain Gilead. Uh, there's Pel A. Yon. Pel A. Yon. Uh, coming down to Thrawn's, onto Thrawn's Chimera. He drops down for free. Chris moving Price over with the Blizzard 4. So Chris setting up himself to not have to pay with Battle Plan next turn. And he also would be setting up a Drain of 1 up in space, a Drain of 2 on the ground, and then cause pain damage with the Admiral's Order. Uh, price is pretty good on the ground. Um, being that Justin could just theoretically drop a bunch of power on the Blizzard Aid and Price. You really want to have some forfeit value. So let's see what Justin's going to do. He's got 16 force in his force pile. There's the come here you big coward shield from Chris, so no retrieval for Justin. But Justin is going to take a card with Ray off the bottom of his force pile. Don't think we're going to see Justin drain here as it is only a drain of one. No, he's going to go into deploy phase, attempt to deploy a docking bay. Uh, he does have three docking bays already on the table, so it does look like he, uh, Chris gets a free verify of what the six cards in Justin's reserve deck are. Okay, this is a one-game match, winner take all, to see who will be playing against Joe Olsen in the top four of the Champions League playoff. Justin uses All Wings and Report In, All Wings Report In and Dark Later Spin to pull the Rogue One from his deck. There's the Scarif Beach from hand. So it looks like Justin is going to also try to flip his objective and set up some uh, some damage as well. Leia going down to the Scarif Data Vault. That will flip his objective from. They have no idea we're coming to until we win or the chances are spent. 
Saw Guerrero going down to the beach. So Saw here is a really good play because now even if Chris has Image of Dark Lord V or Dark Waters, that would not cause the drain to be reduced there. Jin Ursa going down as an undercover spy to the capital city. That's going to block a drain of two down there. Justin still has six cards in his force pile. Oh, and eight cards in his hand. He did until he deployed Bodhi Rook down to the beach for one force. Leia grabs the Stardust and will run over to the beach, joining her comrades. So right now, Justin actually takes a slight lead on the damage race. And uh, being that he is doing a little bit, he's all, not only is he doing a little bit more damage, but he's also possibly going to retrieve one with Luke. So pretty solid turn, last turn, couple of turns from the, both players. Uh, I think Justin had the better turn three as he was able to get Jin Ursa to block the drain and then set up some drains and some damage for himself. He moves the Stardust over to Bodhi. And draws a couple of cards. So now it's going to be interesting to see what Chris does in response here. Uh, Chris is going to have a drain of one at Lothal. And then he is going to have a point of damage with the Admiral's Order and the Thrawn Art Collection. So Justin is going to have to lose three cards here. Okay, there's the ping damage from the Admiral's Order. Taidu off the top of the reserve deck for Justin. Drain of one at Lothal, and Justin also going to have to stack a card here. There goes an escape pod combo from his hand. And as Chris stacks a card onto the art collection, he gets to take a card from his reserve deck with Governor Price. As long as the, he can take almost any card he wants, as long as it doesn't have ability. Yeah, that's a really good point by both uh, Bill Kafer and Carl in the chat. Bill saying that Chris can pull Blizzard 1 with Governor Price and then have General Veers to go down and uh, mess up the beach. Carl saying he could drain, stack the card, and go get Trample with Governor Price. So I think both of those are really good options. And I, I agree that uh, Chris would probably most likely do one of those two options here. If you're Justin, maybe you want, I mean, if you're Justin, maybe not putting down the beach here because it is a little bit of a liability. And then you could theoretically spread to some of the other locations. Uh, you know that Chris is running walkers. Uh, why would you not want to? I think you would want to stay inside to avoid the walkers. Like if you could go down to just sit at the data vault, do a drain of one there, do some ping damage. Uh, Yes, you're doing a little bit less damage than you would want to, but you're still doing damage. So Chris still thinking about what he wants to take here. He is in his control phase. Now notice that Justin has yet to lose from the drain at Lothal. He will not have to lose until after Chris decides on what card he wants to take. Okay, Chris going to take lateral damage into hand. Justin will lose Where's Han off the top of his reserve deck to the drain. So Chris not going with either options. Carl in chat saying that uh, Justin probably has a perimeter scan in his hand. That's not a bad card for uh, Justin to have. Okay, Chris showing the Avenger. Meaning that he has Avenger and Captain Captain Nita coming down to Scarif. So now he can put that lateral damage onto one of the light side starships. Reduce the power and the forfeit value of the starship. And he's probably going to put it onto Scarif. Merrick Seal going down. 
onto the Avenger. Both Nita and Merrick Steel both have ability of three, so they get a plus three to their forfeit value. So, Governor uh, Grand Moff Tarkin coming down as well. Yeah, Justin has a eight card hand now. Chris only has one force left, so we're probably not going to see a fight here. Like if if you do that, would they mean then he wouldn't have the force for Blizzard Four. Yep, there's the lateral damage. Going to target the Tana Four. Power is zero now, so that takes away ten from Justin's power up there in space. In the chat, Carl is clearly rooting for uh, Chris in this match. Okay, we have another fight. Now, Chris can use Moff Tarkin to add a battle destiny here. But before he does that, he's going to utilize the Thrawn's art collection. Uh, he puts a 5 into Justin's loss pile. Uh, he puts the Destiny 5, Might of the Public, there. That makes him add plus 3 to his total power. Tarkin will add a Destiny. Let's see if Justin takes a card off of the Sand effect. You know, Justin does have some forfeit up there with the plus two from Insurrection. Chris pulling the fanfare shield. This way he can check out his destinies. Looks like Justin is passing action over to Chris. And it doesn't look like Chris or uh, Justin is going to take a card off of the sand effect. So both players should get two battle destinies here. Ray is going to take a card off the bottom of Justin's force pile. Chris using fanfare. He's going to pull Lost in Space. So even if he loses a character here in this fight, he should be able to play Lost in Space and get the character back onto the Avenger. goes back over to Justin. Let's see what Justin wants to do here. Justin currently down by 13 in power. Chris throws a 4 for the first battle of Destiny. Draws a 5 for the second one. So he's going to have 28 in power. Or I'm sorry, 20, 27. Justin draws a two for Battle Destiny. Uh, he does get to retrieve one with make ten men feel like a hundred. He will retrieve Might or the Republic. So again, he draws a two for his first destiny. For his second draw, he draws a two as well. So not really good destinies for Justin. Unfortunately, that's one of the biggest issues with no idea. You don't get a lot of good destinies. So... Chris will win the fight. Again, he is going to have to lose a character here to attrition as Justin draws a 2 and a 2, and then his total battle destiny is plus 1 with Ray. But more importantly, let's see who Justin loses. Chris will lose Moff Tarkin. There's Lost in Space. So Tarkin is going to be stacked onto the effect. And then during the move phase, Chris can just... Get him back with uh, with uh, Lost in Space. So, really good turn for if you're a Chris Kelly fan. Justin loses Ray. He loses I Don't Like Sand. Now, he still has to lose one more with uh, Attrition. And since Chad Hill say... Still down by seven in Life Force or seven in battle damage, he's going to lose Jaron Webb and projection of Skywalker from hand. So Justin 
losing three as well as multiple characters from up in space. So really good sequence of events there for Chris. Unfortunately for Chris, though, he's going to lose that Blizzard 4 as he doesn't have any force to pay for its upkeep. So the Blizzard 4 is going to go out of play here. Now Justin's going to do three points of damage to Chris. Uh, Chris in the chat saying that he meant to click on Lost in Space during the move phase so he can get Grand Moff Tarkin back. Mm, Justin is activating and he says sure so Justin's going to allow Tarkin back onto the field. Classy move by Justin. I mean he could have been saying no to the revert but Justin's a good guy. I mean, that would have been a kind of a bad situation for for Chris. Uh, he would have only gotten one Battle Destiny up there in space right now. Justin is getting two Battle Destiny. So, but I mean, Chris is ahead by 13 in power. So, Lost in Space goes to the Lost Pile. Tarkin goes back onto the Avenger. And we continue on with Justin's turn as scheduled. Again, Justin's going to drain for two at the beach and then cause a point of damage with Stardust. Now, again, he, what he can also do is utilize the seven side of his objective to move one of those spies to either to the data vault or possibly to space uh, if he wanted so. That would, I mean, he could just move one of those spies and during the control phase. So first thing he's going to do, he is going to drain. Uh, Chris losing Kashyyyk and Force Push. Uh, Kashyyyk from his hand, Force Push from his reserve deck. Luke will retrieve Projection of Skywalker. So Justin is slowly retrieving right now. He's got a lot of cards on the table compared to Chris. Uh, Chris's Life Force count is 29 to Justin's 17. Chris will lose Image of a Dark Lord from the top of his reserve deck. So Justin will not utilize his objective. And in doing so, he doesn't move one of those character any of those characters around. Uh, here we go so with some action. General Aaron Kraken coming down to the Lothal City. So we're probably gonna see Jin break her cover here. Ray going back down to the transport. Now, if Justin were to initiate a fight, Chris is going to have to lose Admiral Mahdi first before he loses General Price. So, I, I like this play by Justin. You force Chris now, because he lost the Blizzard 4, he, doesn't, he loses a lot of power uh, with Kraken down there. Uh, if he had, uh, he is getting one destiny currently. If he gets two more ability, he'll as long as it's a scout or a spy, he would get a second battle destiny as well. Taidu hops onto Leia's resistance transport. So I still think that Justin is going to want maybe one more character here, unless he does plan on breaking Jin's cover. He's got five force to work with, three cards in his reserve deck, so he definitely can afford to break Jin's cover if he wants to draw two battle destinies. But with Mahdi and Price both having pretty high forfeit values, I don't know if it's really necessary. Mahdi has a forfeit value of eight. Uh, Price also has forfeit value of eight, but like I said, you have to lose uh, Mahdi first. Uh, Torn Far going on to the transport. So Justin's stacking up some cards up there, up in space. Justin still has four cards left in his force pile. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it to break Jin's cover just because Madi has such a high forfeit value. Like, unless you draw a five and a like, you'd have to draw a five and a four to break her, break through that immunity and cause both Price and Madi to go. I think it's just worth it just fighting with Kraken. Okay, he does break Jin Urso's cover. So he is going to get two battle destinies here. Ray drawing card off of out. Yeah, but the next question is, what's the next card? Uh, Commander Willard going down to the beach. Here we go. Kraken and Jin versus Mahdi and Price. Justin getting two battle destiny. Chris only getting one. Chris adding three to his total power. No, let's see. Lieutenant Blount is a two. I mean, okay. Yeah, there's no point to losing Blount just yet. This would only made it so Justin's immunity to attrition would have been canceled there. Draws a two. Now, I think the next card's a two. Justin taking a decent time here thinking about what, what he wants to do. Tells me that he's got something in his hand or something that he can do about drawing the two. Maybe he's also thinking about retrieving here. He is going to pay the one force to retrieve. He retrieves the escape pod combo. And there's a five, so it's seven. It, it's it's not. It, I don't. I didn't like that play because, like, okay. I mean, in hindsight, it was the correct play, breaking her cover. But yeah, you're losing uh, crack in there. And now Chris only has to lose Mahdi. So the one thing is it does cut away one of the points of damage that Chris has with, with the Admiral's Order. But now Jin is all by herself. So unless he has a Hojix here, this could be really, really bad. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. This could be very bad for Justin. Like, Kraken has a, had a forfeit value of six. So, he covered eight. Chris had, what, 16? So, yeah, he would have lost two. Well, I'm assuming that Justin has a second Hojix somewhere in the deck. This is no idea. A lot of play, players do play with two. But the deck is a little different, being that we saw Bale Organa already. But I'm not sure. Chris will, after the battle, Chris uses his Endor Shield to pull Admiral Ozel. Activates three. Let's see what he's going to do here. Probably going to play. We must accelerate our plans to pull in effect. Yep, there's the interrupt. Let's see what effect he's going to get. Maybe no escape. I think uh, if he gets no escape here, that would be a good one. Maybe Imperial Enforcement. Nope, no escape V. So that's going to allow him to take Admiral Mahdi back into his hand in his control phase. So, Chris, even though he only has a four-card hand at this point, that was a 
good sequence of events for him. Yeah, he lost Monty there, and but now he's going to get Monty back. There's the drain at Lothal. Justin again will have to stack a card. Justin has 15 cards in his reserve deck. Chris sitting at 27 in Life Force. So again, Chris Kelly doesn't have a lot of cards on the table, but Justin unfortunately does. Justin currently has 23 cards outside of what he started with on the table. Okay, there's the drain of one at Lothal. He loses Shirut off the top of the deck. Justin stack Sabotage. Chris playing Imperial Command to go pull an Admiral or General. Probably going to see a General into his hand. And if he pulls General Veers, yes, he's going to pull General Veers. Uh, he utilizes Governor Price's game text to pull Imperial Command. Imperial Command got him General Veers. So here, here we go. This, again, could be pretty bad for Justin. No escape onto the table for Chris. That's going to allow him to take Admiral Bonnie out of his lost pile and into hand. So we know that two of his cards in his, in his hand right now are Admiral Bonnie and General Veers. Question is, what are those other three cards? He's got eleven force in his reserve or in his force pile. Mahdi going down onto the Avenger. And we still might see General Veers coming down as Maudie came down for one force. Veers and a walker here on Jin Urso would be pretty bad for Justin Miyashiro. But Chris is taking his time. He's sitting at 33 minutes left on his timer. I don't expect this game to go much. Uh, I don't expect this game to go to time. Ben Canal coming down with Governor Price. So now Chris has the ability to draw for Destiny. Again, Min would have to go to the Lost Pile first. But this should be enough to get Jin Urso off the table. Chris plays Vote of No Confidence with Min. Not sure about that one. I mean, unless he's expecting like Grimtosh here. Admiral Oslo going down for free. Okay, so we know one of those cards is General Veers. Not sure about the other one yet. And here we go. We have another fight on the at the Lothal capital city. Chris thinking about if he wants to use Thrawn's art collection to put a card back into Justin's lost pile here. He could either cancel the immunity or he could add three to his power. He does not do it. Justin takes a card off the sand effect. He takes Bay's Malbus with cannon. Justin sitting down by 7 in power. Chris draws a 4 for Destiny. He draws Imperial Decree V. Bringing him up to 15 in power. Justin draws a 5. Bringing him up to 9. So he's going to be down by 6. Jin covers 5. So he's going to have to lose 1 and Jin here. Chris is going to have to lose Min. He loses Governor Price. Uh, 
Oh, he didn't. Oh, it has to be in a battle you lost. Okay. Uh, so Governor Price says, while in a battle you lost, unless hit or no other imperial, no other imperials present, she may not be forfeited. Okay. So Justin again has to lose Jin. He checks out Chris's hand. He figures out what the other card is, and he has to lose one on top of her. Uh, Justin is saying nice in the chat. So, not sure exactly what that means. <laughs> Justin's saying Blizzard 8 and General Veers is a, is a good hand for those playing at home, along at home. <laughs> this is one thing I do like about Justin. He, uh, he, he gives the information. He shares information with us, the viewers. Uh, he, he will lose Rogue One from his hand. Uh, I just don't see... I, I hate to say this for Justin, being that he's on my team and everything. I don't see a line of plays. Like, he really has to be... He, he needs to get in a beatdown. But I really... Unless he can come down with multiple characters to, like, the Lothal City here, I really don't see a, a line for him to get a... A good beatdown in. Uh, the Tana 4 and Lady Resistance Transport up in Scarif aren't going to do very much against the Avenger. You've got Mahdi, Tarkin, Merrick Steele, and Captain Nita all up there. Uh, on the Chimera, you have Thrawn, Admiral Piet, and Captain Pelinon. So, again, Pelinon has a lot of forfeit value. So I think the best line of play here, I, I, I would have rather seen Justin go down and spread. I mean, yes, it, it is only a drain of one at the blockade flagship bridge, but it is a drain of one. Yeah. I, th I think you're right, Carl, that Bay's going down in front of Ozzel is the right play, is shooting Ozzel and then shooting men. But I think Chris is reading into that as he puts Admiral Piet from the Chimera down to Lothal. Like, Chris is running on all cylinders right now. Uh, I think set 20 was definitely something good for Chris Kelly. So Justin will take a card, uh, put a card back and take a card with Commander Willard, and he will start his turn. We know that one of the cards in his hand is Baze. But let's see what he can do here. He is going to drain for two and cause a point of ping damage with the Stardust. And then if he wants to, he can retrieve one with Luke. Life Force counts are 14 for Justin, 24 for Chris. Both players have four cards in their hand. Chris loses we're in attack position now and Blizzard's got one. He loses the second copy of the Admiral's Order from his hand. He loses the Scout Walker off the top. Justin will retrieve. He retrieves Rogue One. And we should see him do the point of ping damage with Stardust. Let's see. Chris will... What will Chris lose? He's going to lose Sith Fury off the top. Okay, so now we go into Justin's deploy phase. Probably going to see him very soon use Wackling to retrieve one force. Bay's going down in front of Ozzel, Piet, and Min. Captain Cassian Andor. Okay, that's a pretty good card. Cassian can put a character out of play to cancel a battle destiny or a weapon destiny. Again, Chris should... Take a card off of the Thrawn Art Collection to add three to his total power. Justin probably not going to take a card off of Sand here. So let's see who he's going to shoot with uh, Baze. Piet and Min are probably the two best targets as you'd make them forfeit equal zero. No, he's going to shoot at Ozel. Draws a five. Yep, shooting at Min or Piet would have been the better choice here. You get rid of their higher to uh, forfeit value.
Justin thinking about what he wants to do. Chris also thinking. Justin draws a 5 for Battle Destiny. That's going to bring him up to 13. Now he can cancel that Destiny that Chris is going to draw, and he would actually win this fight. But then all Chris does is drops Blizzard 8 and General Veers down onto Cassian and Baze's head. Yeah, I don't think you I think you have to cancel the battle destiny here if you're Justin. Chris, on the other hand, does not draw destiny. I like this play. Yes, you're gonna lose two characters, but Well, I don't like I don't know. Like I don't know. I, I think you needed to draw the destiny and force Justin into canceling your battle destiny. That way when you draw Beers and Blizzard one down you still you're gonna get rid of multiple characters. Or I'm sorry, not Blizzard One, Blizzard Eight. So but I'm not gonna question what Chris is doing. Clearly he is doing really well in the Champions League. The question is at this point, if he does advance out of after this match, will his luck and playability continue against Joe Olson? Uh, for those who are for uh, for those who don't remember uh, when Joe won his first world champion, uh, I believe Chris Kelly was knocked out by Joe Olson in the top four. Okay, so Chris does lose men. He has Admiral Piet still left. Justin in his move phase here. I'm surprised to see Justin hasn't utilized his game text on the objective. I, I know, Bill. Like, but I think if you're Justin, I think you're going to put a character out of play. Like, I don't think... I don't think Chris is too worried about... giving up the site, because if... Uh, if Justin loses Bayes, Cassian is by himself. So you, you and you can't do that, unless of course you do this. Unless you like move the Tanov over and then shuttle Cassian up, but then you leave the, leave the Resistance transport by itself against the Avenger, which has just so much more power on it. So I, I think in that situation, that's what Justin had to do there. Yeah, I think he wanted to drain for two and cause the extra point damage with uh, the Thrawn epic event. Or not the epic event, the uh, effect. Okay, Chris will drain for two at Scarif, though. We're doomed and our escape pod and we're doomed and Might of the Republic go off the top. So two fives off the top for Justin. Chris did activate everything. He's got seven cards left in his reserve deck. We know that two of the cards in his hand are General Veers and the Blizzard 8. And again, uh, one last minute plug for tomorrow. Tomorrow at... Uh, currently it's supposed to go at 8 p.m. That might have to change, be like a half an hour late, but I'll let everybody know tomorrow. Uh, on Hollow Theater, we're going to do our end of the year episode, uh, where all everybody's going to talk about like some of the what they what happened to them this year, highlights, low lifes, uh, good, bad, all things Star Wars, and then uh, we're also going to announce the 2022 guest of the year. So there it is, General Veers in the Blizzard Eight coming down onto. At the uh, Lothal, capital city. Justin has nothing in his force pile, so even if he has the rebel barrier, he couldn't play it. Chris up by five in power. And when General Veer is up there on the walker, he's going to get two destiny. Chris moves the Avenger over to Lothal. 
So this is where I like Justin spreading out a little bit more. Like Justin needed to spread out and do some damage. Uh, get into that non-battleground on Lothal. Do some damage there. But with only two systems on the table and two pretty big Star Destroyers out there, Chris is playing this really well. Tarkin going down to the Advanced Laboratory. So him going down there is going to block it. So so even though Justin is on the zero side of his objective, he wouldn't be able to just drain, uh, move a character over there and then drain. Maudie going down as well. And Chris will draw a card. Let's see, is he going to save that last card or is he going to draw it here? Okay, Chris will leave it there. Life Force counts are 21 for Chris. Justin sitting at 13. Both players with 12 or more cards in Lost Pile. Uh, on top of that, Justin has two cards still stacked on the Thrawn Art Collection. Justin activates everything, draws a card with Ray. Again, he's going to do three points of damage here. Two, uh, two with the Drain at the beach, one with Stardust, and then he is going to retrieve with Luke. So the game is very much so in its grindy stages here. There goes Mara Jade with Lightsaber and another Grand Moff Tarkin off the top for Chris. Luke will retrieve Might of the Republic. Your lateral damage is no longer in effect, but I think if you're Justin, you cannot fight into 31 power. Chris loses Imperial Command off the top of the reserve deck to the Stardust Ping. And Justin goes into his deploy phase. No cards in his reserve deck, so I highly doubt we're going to see a battle here. That is, of course, un unless Justin can get Shirut out of his lost pile and onto the field. But I think if you're Justin, you want to spread out as much as you can. The Endor Commando team going down to the Advanced Projects Laboratory. Projection of Skywalker on the capital city. So that's going to reduce that drain from a drain of two to a drain of one. And it gets you away from General Veers piloting that walker. Justin still has one card left in his hand. I do expect to see Baze and Cassian move. And then I'm probably going to see the Transport as well as the Tan of Four move as well. Cassian move in, is moving into the Special Projects Labor, or uh, into the Imperial Complex. Baze moves over as well. Uh... Leaving Cassian here by himself is a little is very risky. <laughs> Tanif moves over. Justin flips back. The transport moves over as well. Uh, might see a character move over to the data vault. Uh, if you can start pointing in a, some more drains there. Yep, Leia moves over as well. See, I think this is what Justin should have been doing from the get-go. When he was flipped, he, uh, during one of his control phases, he should have just moved over to the data vault. Okay, so now Chris actually is ahead on to, uh, cards in his lost pile, um, but Justin is about to take three more points of damage. Drain of one at the capital city, drain of one at Lothal, and then one to the Thrawn art collection. There goes the Bright Hope off the top of the reserve deck. Commander Melshi to the lost pile off the top of the reserve deck as well. 
And the drain of one at the capital city. And there goes a rebel barrier. Justin sitting at 10 cards in life force. He's got one in card in hand. Yeah, Cassian Andor could be bad. Either going to Leia's site or Cassian's site. Uh, Justin will also lose to we're in attack position now as Mahdi is back on the table and at the site. So he loses Luke Skywalker V off the top. Again, he's at nine cards in life force, one card in hand. Chris sitting at 20 hand in life. But yeah, Darth Vader, Dar uh, Dark Lord of the Sith would be bad. Darth Vader, Emperor's Enforcer would be bad. Yeah, just Darth Vader in general would be very bad for, for Justin. Chris in his deploy phase, thinking about what he wants to do. Uh, I think at this point, we're going to go ahead and give our, our token. Chris thinking about, still thinking about what he wants to do. Uh, he's got about five minutes down on Justin in time. But at this point, I think if you're Chris, you really don't care about that. You're sitting really well on board position. You're still causing four points of force loss a turn. But, I mean, yes, Justin is causing a decent, he's going to be causing a decent amount of force loss this turn too. But I think if you're Chris, I think you can afford to take it. As right now, in three turns, Justin's, Justin's dead. Merrick Seal's shelling down as well. Mahdi, or Piet, moves over in front of Cassian Andor. That's going to block that drain. And now Justin is only going to be doing five points of damage to, to Chris. And I think you're fine with that. Chris going to move Nita over to the Chimera. Nope, he's going to move Peleon to the Avenger. Interesting. I, I I would have rather have seen everybody sit on one ship. Like, if he's got all three characters on the one ship, he could have just moved those over to Scarif, block that one drain. But, again, I don't think he needs it necessarily. I mean, he could just be moving force around to get more force into his reserve deck next turn, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I agree that he should only send one ship. Like, I like... I think you need Tarkin up there to get that second destiny. Like, if you're going to move one ship to Lothal, you need one with uh, getting... To, uh, you need a ship that has two destiny on it. And like I don't I think Chris is playing a little too conservative to be honest. Okay, Chris gets another revert from Justin. Chris asking him to go back again. <laughs> I will say, Carl, I'm glad that you uh, are here to 
help us analyze what Chris Kelly is thinking. Okay, so he does ship off the Chimera with the Avenger. Uh, while we're in the middle of Chris moving around characters and everything, let's go ahead and give our token. I think our token is going to be Admiral Mahdi. Uh, I haven't seen him used very often, and I really like what Chris is do utilizing him with. Uh, you're getting in that point of ping damage with we're in attack position now. Okay, so he does move both ships over. <laughs> well, you're on this team, Carl. Carl's saying that you're not going to pretend how to know what Chris is thinking. I don't even think anybody knows what Chris is thinking. Uh, the token is Admiral Mahdi V. And at the end of Chris's turn, Justin will... Place Walkman out of play so that way he can retrieve one. He's going to retrieve Luke Skywalker and B. Uh, I don't think Chris is going to, or I don't think Justin's going to fight uh, up in space at least this turn. We might see a fight on the ground, but definitely not going to see one in the space. And that's why I keep saying, like, I would love to see Justin use his objective to move some of the characters around in his control phase. Uh, Bodhi might be a good one to move up to one of the systems or up to one of those starships up there. Uh, being that, even though Chris now, now Chris has a ten card hand, so Chris got a lot of cards in his hand to work with next turn. I mean, he is going to be taking four points of damage. So I do expect to see him lose from his hand here. Okay, he's going to put some cards back during the activate phase. There's We Must Accelerate Our Plan to take a We Must Accelerate Our Plans from his reserve deck. Yeah, um, two points of damage. Or no, you're right, one point of damage. He's only doing one point of damage right now with the drain at the capital city. Uh, he does not have uh, the Admiral's Order in effect right now. There goes, okay, he plays Death's Wonder and Asylumus to take a card. Pulls out Marquin in Blizzard 6. Putting some cards back to get some stuff that he hopefully can do something with. And here we go, Justin's going to drain at the Data Vault with Leia. Chris is going to lose Imperial Command from his hand. Yeah, I, I think Chris is trying to go for a beatdown ending. I know that's what Justin needs to do at this point. Drain of two at the beach. Chris loses coarse and rough and irritating from his hand, his own Santa card. Let's see, what is the other card he's going to lose here? As he still needs to lose one more. He'll lose the Vengeance V. So he loses another Star Destroyer. And then he's got to lose to the Stardust Ping. But before he, that goes on, Justin's going to retrieve a Rebel Barrier with Luke Skywalker V. Stardust moves over to Willard. This tells me that Justin is going to want to move Bodhi up into space. Give himself some force. Yep, Bodhi's going to move up in space. Uh, he does do it in the control phase. So finally glad to see Justin utilizing the seventh side of his objective. Bodhi is going to add some power up there, bringing in just an 18 in total power. There's a Stardust ping for Justin. Chris will lose a We Must Accelerate Our Plans from his hand. And there's another Projection of Skywalker going down. That one's to the Advanced Projects lab Laboratory. Corporal Powell joining Cassian. 
So that looks like that's going to be where we're going to have our fight this turn. Okay, Justin does initiate. He's got no cards left in his hand at this point. Piet not going to draw Battle Destiny. So Justin should be able to keep both Cassian and Corporal Powell on the table. But again, Piet has quite the nice forfeit value due to do they have a code clearance. Action on Chris Kelly. He's thinking about what he wants to do here. He could utilize the Thrawn's art collection. And I believe with the Bright Hope out there, that would make it so that one of the characters would be excluded from the battle. So that would be a good way to make it so that, you, that Justin will not draw Destiny. Well, let's see what just or let's see what Chris is going to do here. Nope, he's going to take it, and Justin draws a one for Battle Destiny. He adds one with Corporal Pal. It's going to become a two, so it's going to be eight to three. Chris is only going to have to lose Admiral Piet. So now Chris does leave the three on the art collection so he could theoretically only, he could use it somewhere else. I think that's the better play. But now Justin only has two cards left in his force pile. So let's see what he's gonna do this turn. Again, as Bill pointed out in the chat, Chris is only doing one point of damage to Justin. Justin ends his turn, saving two force. He's got 10 force in his life force. Chris sitting at 16 hand in life. So let's see what Chris is going to do this turn. We know that he put a few cards back last turn. I believe that the... Bottom two cards in his reserve deck are a five and a four. He does activate down to those five, that five and four. Justin takes a card with Ray. So that's essentially doing... It's a total destiny up there of nine, wherever Justin wants... Or wherever Chris wants to fight this turn. Uh, I'm saying those are, I think those are just, uh, Chris's destiny. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, he was doing it. He did it on uh, Justin's turn in the activate phase. Mark went in Blizzard 6. And why are you texting and driving, Bill? I, I have to yell at you now. Oh, we're, you were driving. Okay, okay. Now you're home safe. So that that's all that matters. Why were you texting and driving earlier, though? Okay, so Mark, when going down to the Advanced Projects Laboratory. Adding quite the bit of power there. <laughs> I mean, I got no reason to yell at you. I do it all the time as well. But I just don't want our viewers to think that driving and texting is uh, an approved form of communication from the PC. Uh, I want to say that we, it is not approved, like we do not approve of texting and driving at, uh, with, with the Star Wars PC and yeah it is bad don't do it 
Okay, lateral damage coming back out onto the tandem. That's two lateral damages for Chris Kelly this game. So we might see a fight up in space. I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, Chris needs to, to, he needs to block some of the damage that he's receiving. Overwhelmed would be very, very big. <laughs> I mean, the only problem with the overwhelmed is all those cards go back to the use pot, like they go back into the deck. And Justin would be flipped back. So, I mean, he could theoretically get the tandem four back. But I don't know. Like, I think that's what Chris is looking at. Okay, he's in his battle phase, so no overwhelmed. Uh, and he does initiate. Okay, here we go. He's going to add three to his total power with the putting the five back into the lost pile. Oh, you're right. He wouldn't flip back. Yeah. Uh, Admiral Oz is going to make it so that Chris can, uh, Justin's not going to be drawing more than one destiny here, but I do expect to see Justin taking the card off of I Don't Like Sand. So that way both players only draw one battle destiny. Chris, or Justin putting Antilles Maneuver back into his deck. It is a trackable five. Justin also grabs the Imperial Command, so that way Chris cannot get it back. Uh, he added to the total power. Yeah, you're right. He could go with Bays, uh, exclude one of the characters... You want to draw Destiny, but I don't. I think he's fine with that. Okay, so both players are only getting one battle Destiny here. Oh, you're right. He still would get one. Yeah. Chris playing history, philosophy, and art. He's going to add two to his total battle Destiny. Uh, again, I think the top card of Chris's reserve deck is a four. And then the next one is a five. If that's the case, then this is a really good turn for Chris. Chris taking his time. Justin also think, taking his time here. Here we go. Battle Destiny is a four. It is going to become a six here, so it's going to be 36 for Chris. Justin draws a one. His total becomes a four. And Chris Kelly is fully immune. Justin has to stack a card with the art collection here. Justin down by 24 in power. Oof. We got a little commentary in the chat from Justin to Chris. Okay, there goes Bodie Rook for six. Still has 18. Taidu. For another six. Twelve more to go. Ray to the lost pile. And Bail Organa is the last one. Bale going to the, uh, the use pile with Commander Willard. Chris still in his battle phase. And as the chat pointed out, Chris still has one battle destiny left. 
Ah, Justin's going to use Torn Far to retrieve a Rebel, but unfortunately he can't. Uh, he doesn't have any Force saved. He's going to utilize Commander Willard. Big Blue is back. Yeah, I think you're right, Jared. And here we go, another fight. Chris going to utilize, there's the object. The, the Bright Hope goes to the Lost Pile. One character is going to be excluded. Baze Malbus is excluded. Chris down by double in power. And he's getting a battle destiny, and it's going to be a five. So it's going to be 21 to eight. Yep. The chat pointing out it's going to be six and overflow. That's going to be uh, Chris, or that's going to be Jared. Uh, Justin, Jared, Justin, too many people. There's uh, Justin has 10 in life force, so he's going to be down to four. Justin will concede. Chris Kelly moves on to face Joe Olson. The Chris Kelly train continues. Chris saying thank you some close games. Jared wishing or Jared Justin wishing Chris luck. And that's it, everybody. Uh, again, checking up on the remainder of the Champions League. Uh, nobody wants to see that stuff. Okay, so now our top eight is completed. We have our top. Four. Chris advances. Uh, so from the top eight, Chris Kelly, Matt Harrison, trainer Connor Britton, and Joe Olson all advance to the the second round. Chris Kelly will be facing against Joe Olson uh, again. Chris will be picking the deck that uh, the side that each player will be uh, playing. Matt Harrison, trainer faces off against Connor Britton. So we have Coruscant versus Endor. The Outer Rim versus SoCal. So it's once those games are scheduled, we'll let everybody know. Uh, stay tuned to the forums and to Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, our token for today was Admiral Mati V. Uh, and uh, yeah, so until next time, again, Hollow Theater tomorrow is our end of the year episode. Uh, we will announce the guest of the year, so make sure everybody uh, tunes into that. It's going to be a fun episode. So until tomorrow, everybody take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay warm if you're in America and on the East Coast. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. So until tomorrow, as always, I'm Dancer Taglione. May the Force be with you. Good night, everybody.